So whether you need to find areas or z-scores or critical values for the normal curve, Desmos is absolutely the way to go. So much better than using tables. Let's dive in. I'm gonna log into desmos.com and then click open that graphing calculator. Now to get to the normal curve function, you wanna type normal dist, which is kind of easy to forget. Let me X this out, but it's easy to grab from the keypad. I'm gonna X this and then let's open up that keypad over here to functions and I'm looking for distributions. So if I scroll down, distributions are right here. Here's the normal distribution along with several others. We're gonna work on the normal dist today. Now make sure you stick around till the end. I'm gonna show you some customizing tools as well. But first we wanna answer these questions. We wanna find the area under the normal curve for these z-scores. In order to do that, I'm gonna click this cumulative probability arrow. Notice that I'm on the standard normal curve. That's when my mean is zero and my standard deviation is one. I do have an example where the mean and standard deviation are different, but for now, this is exactly what we want. And it's asking for the probability that X is between two different values. Well, these are gonna be our Z scores and I wanna make sure that I've got area clicked so I'm ready to go. I also need to fix the view of our graph. My normal curve right now is super squashed. So I wanna click on this zoom fit icon. It looks like a magnifying glass with a plus sign. So much better. Okay, we are ready to answer that first question and it's asking me to find the area when Z is between negative 1.3 and positive 1.3. Right now, I'm looking for an inner area, which is exactly what I want, an inner area, but I don't want it to be between negative one and one. I want negative 1.3, let me just tab over, and 1.3. And then it gives me that area of 0 0.806. Notice it gives you that down arrow along with the answer. If we click on the down arrow, it gives us lots of decimal places, which is great. Even better, you can click this button here to get it copied into the next cell. Great for if you're doing other calculations or wanna remember this value. Okay, let me X this and I'm ready for my next area. Part B says the area when my Z-score is less than or equal to negative two. Less than or equal to, that's gonna be an area on the left. So I'm gonna go area on the left and I don't wanna be less than or equal to negative 1.3. I wanna be less than or equal to negative two. And there's my area of 0 0.023. Finally, we want an area where Z is greater than or equal to 1.65. That's gonna be an area on the right. And I change that to 1.65 for an area of 0 0.049. Number two is a little bit different. And number two, we're asked to find Z scores for these given areas. Part A asks me to find the Z scores that cut off the middle 50%. So in this case, I still wanna leave the region as that inner region, but I wanna change from what I'm computing to an area to those bounds. Notice how now the values inside the parentheses are grayed out and my answer on the other side, that area is not grayed out. So I'm gonna type right over this area and 50% would be 0.5. So I'm gonna change that to 0.5 and it gives me, these are my Z Z scores. So my Z's are between negative 0.674 and positive 0.674. Okay, part B. Part B wants an upper 10%. So that's not gonna be an inner area. Instead, that's gonna be the right area. So I click on right and I want the upper 10%. This is the upper 50% because I still have 0.5. 10% would be 0.1 and I get a Z score of 1.282. Next, we've got number three. And number three is gonna get us off of that standard normal curve with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Number three says that the average salary for a registered nurse is $95,350 with a standard deviation of $7,250. Okay, so we're given our mean and our standard deviation. Find the salaries that cut off the middle 50%. So it's similar to the one that we just did, but I need to change the mean and standard deviation. This normal dist has parentheses next to it. Right now, it's understood to be 0, 0,1, mean, comma, see that comma there, standard deviation. My mean for our nursing salary is 95350, comma, our standard deviation is 7250. So I've got a very different looking normal curve and I can't even see it there on my graph. 
let me do zoom fit again so I can see that curve. Okay, so there it is, that looks great. I wanna find the salaries that cut off. So I do wanna find bounds, not an area. And I wanna cut off a middle area. So I'm gonna choose inner for my region. So I've got this set up to find the bounds for an inner region. Our inner region is 50%. And that means that I wanna change this number here to 50% or 0 0.50. The salaries that I'm given are in a really funky form, right? Nine times 10 to the fourth click that down arrow and I'm actually going to copy it into an empty cell. That's my salary. So 90,459. And if I round it 95 cents, so that would be my lower bound. That's right over here. And then my upper bound. So let's click the down arrow for this upper bound. And I'm going to also copy this in so I can get a better view. That's going to be a hundred thousand two hundred and forty dollars and five cents. We're ready for number four. Number four is actually super similar to what we just did with the inner areas, but this time we're applying it to confidence intervals. And for these confidence intervals, we want a confidence level or an inner area of, in part A, 95%. And it's given me this kind of funky notation of Z alpha over two. Well, alpha is the outer area, and we're gonna split that into two. You don't need to worry about that. Just know that we want those Z scores. So that means that I wanna find the bounds for the inner area. Let me X off of what we had. I wanna go back to my standard normal distribution. And to do that, you can just highlight and then delete what we had in there for the mean and standard deviation. And I'm right back to zero and one. We have a confidence level of 95%. So that means that I want my inner area to be 0.95 and then enter. Um, remember, we had zoomed fit for that last example. Let's just zoom fit again so we can see this. So over here on my graph, there's a lot of things that really don't matter when we're looking at confidence intervals or even just normal curves. The grid doesn't matter. So let me go to my graph here and I want to, I'm gonna make things darker so it shows up a little bit better. I'm gonna get rid of the grid and I'm gonna get rid of the Y axis and it looks a lot more like a normal curve. I also have the increments on the X axis right now, um, going from zero to two to four in increments of two. So let's change that to increments of one so it's easier to read. Back to our wrench, I'm gonna change that step to a one. Okay, so looking better. Part B is exactly like part A, but this time I've got an inner 90%. So let's just get rid of that five. So we've got an inner 90%. My Z score cutoffs are negative 1.645 and positive 1.645. Next up is number five, and in number five, we're looking for critical values. And critical values are also z-scores, and we're looking for critical values when alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Alpha is an area in a tail. So that's gonna be one of our outer areas, either on the left or on the right or both. So for part A, I've got a critical value or an area of 0 0.05, and I'm doing this for a right tail hypothesis test. So this is going to be right, I'm computing not the area, but the bound. I've been given the area and I can change that to 0 0.05. Here's another customizing tip for you. We wanna label the z-score that cuts off that upper tail, that upper 0.05%. So let's get rid of the numbers on the x-axis right now. And I'm gonna click the wrench to do that. And then let's click unchecking access numbers. And I wanna put a label right here. To do that, I'm gonna label the point that lives right there. That point has an X value of 1.645. So parentheses, 1.645 and a Y value of zero comma zero. And I wanna label this point. And I'm gonna label that point not with the coordinates, but instead I wanna label it with Z equals 1.645. I would love instead to have this lined up underneath and I'd love to match the color just because that's how I am. So I'm gonna click and hold on this dot. I'm gonna change the label color to blue. And over here in this little directional square, I'm gonna choose the bottom. Okay, so I've got that labeled, which is great. Let's do the next one. I'm gonna X out of both of these. This time I want a left tail. So I'm just gonna click on left and now it says X is less than, and I've got that 0 0.05. Let's label this one as well. So parentheses, that gives me an X value that cuts off the area on the left of negative 1.645, but a Y value of zero, even though we don't totally have Y values here. 
I'm going to click on the label. So Z is equal to negative 1.645. Click and hold on the dot and then click the bottom arrow there to get it labeled underneath. I've got one more and that's for a two tail hypothesis test. So let's X here. And for a two tail, I want it to be on the outer. Notice how it split that area now into two. And I've got that same alpha, that same area in the tails of 0 0.05, just split. And I've got values of negative 1.96 and positive 1.96. I'd love to know what you think about normal curves in Desmos. I've got more for you here.